Physically based shading has been a popular topic recently and for good reason, because it helps simplify the process of making good looking materials. But like with OpenGL versus DirectX normal maps, some companies disagree over how it should be done, and so different software packages end up with different ways of implementing the same general concept. Some programs use the metalness workflow for PBR while others use a specular workflow, and still others appear to use a combination of the two. There are many different texture types out there for physically based rendering, and so it can get a bit confusing. In this video, I just want to go over the ones you're most likely to run into and how to use them, because some are only intended to be used in combination with others. The core of the metalness workflow is made up of three components, color, microsurface, and metalness. The specular workflow, however, is made up of color, microsurface, and specularity. So of course the big obvious difference here is between metalness and specular maps as the names imply. Metalness maps are only black and white to show which parts of a surface are metal or non-metal. In the metalness workflow, the color of the metal comes from the base color. The benefit of this is that since it's only totally black or totally white, it can be compressed quite a bit with no noticeable loss in quality. Specular maps, on the other hand, do have colors in the areas that should be metal. So in a specular workflow, the color of the metal comes from the specular map and not the base color. Since the specular workflow uses color to denote which is metal, the brightness of the map controls the reflectivity. It generally does not make much difference though, but if you do need to be 100% correct, then specular is probably the way to go, since the metalness workflow doesn't have a direct way to control reflectivity. But in most cases, the difference is fairly negligible. Both workflows do use base color textures, which are also called albedo maps. These color maps are different from the old school diffuse maps in that they should not contain any shading information like shadows or ambient occlusion. In the metalness workflow, since the color of the metallic reflection comes from the base color, you would just use a regular base color texture like you're probably used to seeing already. In the specular workflow, since the color of the metallic reflection comes from the specular map, those areas of the base color map will be completely black. So an easy way to tell which workflow someone is using is to look at the base color to see if it contains the color for the metallics or not. The next piece of the puzzle for both workflows is the microsurface maps, which approximate the microscopic details on the surface of an object, making it appear either shiny or rough. This will either be called a roughness map or a gloss map, depending on the software that you're using. They're exact opposites of each other though, so if you have a gloss map and you need a roughness map, just invert the colors. It's easy to confuse the terms gloss and reflectivity, because the higher gloss something is, the more reflective it appears. So instead of that, think of reflectivity as the amount of light being bounced back instead of being absorbed. Gloss or roughness do have to do with how fuzzy the reflections may be, but they don't actually affect how much gets reflected in the first place. Lastly, in ambient occlusion maps help make up for the lack of lighting details in the albedo map. Separating the ambient occlusion from the albedo map in a game engine helps the light to look a little bit more natural. Ambient light is occluded in those areas, but dynamic lights, like a character's flashlight, won't be blocked. This type of map is only really needed for real-time games, because animation renderers like Cycles will calculate this type of occlusion automatically along with global illumination. So as I mentioned before, most programs with PBR shaders still work a little bit differently from each other, so it's important to know which maps to use when the terms get a little bit mixed. As an example, let's take a look at the new principled shader that will be included in Blender 2.79. It has an input for base color, metallic, and specular. So it has both metallic and specular, which map should we use? Should we use either one? Can we use both? Well, remember that the easiest way to tell, regardless of the terms the software is using, is by checking which input the color for the metals goes into. So in this case, we can see that the base color is a color input, while the specular and metallic inputs are gray, indicating only grayscale values. So even though it has the term specular, the node is using the metalness workflow. And usually any program that has a metalness input will be using the metalness workflow. The specular value in this case is controlling the reflectivity, meaning we have the same amount of control as a specular workflow, but we're still using the more intuitive metalness paradigm. I hope that clears up any confusion between the metalness and specular workflows. Remember, don't get too hung up on specific terms because it can get confusing. 
but it doesn't really matter which software or jargon you're using, whether it's Cycles, Renderman, V-Ray, Unity, Unreal, or even Marmoset Toolbag. Just look at which textures control the color of the metals, and the other textures you will need will begin to fall into place based on that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video useful. For a more in-depth look at PBR, check out our Shader Forge series over on CG Cookie, and also be on the lookout for a Blender 2 Substance course coming in the near future.